You're sure he'll be safe? Honey, does a bear have a butt in the woods? Before Jimmy Neutron was on TV, there was the movie. We all know that fact. And before the movie, there was the unaired season. What's up, everybody? This is Johnny2000, and I'm super excited to do one of my first cartoon retrospectives, Jimmy Neutron. Now, I've got quite an exciting lineup for you because as I was realizing and reporting on season one, I realized that there was a secretly unaired season that is just as prominent to Jimmy Neutron's development as the movie and the entire series. So let's get started on this deep dive. So as we know, the pilot is essentially the movie, and then we have the series after that. But before that, we have a series of small shorts. It's very clear that this is kind of like a pilot product, like trying to figure out what the tone and how the show would go. Kind of like how the Fairly Odd Parents started with a bunch of little test shorts, this is kind of the same thing, where they tried Jimmy Neutron out in a bunch of different ways, and all of these ways ended up inevitably getting repurposed for the movie. Upon further research, I learned that these were kind of like placeholders before the movie to come out to kind of give context to Jimmy Neutron bef because they anticipated the show coming first and then the movie, but because of production issues, apparently they had to do the movie first, which is kind of cool because the movie s serves as another kind of pilot. It's really clear that they're testing things out in this. Uh, we start with Runaway Rocket Boy, which is the most obscure because it seems the furthest from what we know as Jimmy Neutron today. It aired in September 7th, 1998. And basically, it was a short that started the series and they liked it so much that they made the film after this initial pitch. It feels more like a pitch video than anything else. And I, I have this little VHS cover of episode one, and it's a little comical. Like, look at this little smug smile. It reminds me of Max from Max and Ruby. This is definitely not Jimmy's attitude for the rest of the show. Carl looks more like his father and a little bit more off-putting. I think it was more interesting when he got more nerdy. And th it's very clear that this was kind of like the plot that would be recycled for the movie because it was, it had some really high stakes elements that clearly couldn't be done in just a single episode of TV. This episode's actually featured on the Confusion Fusion DVD in the special features. I guess there was even a pilot before this about Johnny Quasar because that was initially the plan for the show, but this is like the mark of the beginning of Jimmy Neutron. And then Jimmy's dad gives like him advice and it's actually really funny because it doesn't go Thanks. anywhere. Because that's what rockets are. Rockets are flying things. Well, I hope this talk has helped. A lot of the scenes look a little bit emptier than I remember. Uh, the Goddard scene is definitely repurposed in the movie. So basically, Jimmy runs away after his parents ground him for launching Carl off the roof. Well, Goddard and I are, well, we're running away from home. Jimmy Neutron, you march yourself. <laughs> That's how it's gotta be, son. Your mom and I are gonna miss you. In this, he flies his own rocket through a city, which is, last time I checked, Jimmy lived in a really, really suburban area with no city anywhere. And then, so Jimmy gets kidnapped by the Yokians. See, what did I tell you? They were probably just outside the whole time. Well, you really got him, Jimmy. You with your really uncomfortable animated cheeks. The animation is definitely its oldest looking here. It, it actually makes a significant jump when we get to Carl Squared. Carl Squared. There's a series of like a bunch of little shorts about a minute and a half long. And there's Carl Squared. Anything I can do to help Jimmy? Uh, no thanks, Carl. I'll be done in a bit. Just make yourself at home and don't touch anything. Where Jimmy's using his uh, base bat invention, Carl just ends up getting multiplied, and it seems just like one small comedic bit, but I'm assuming they aired this on the TV. <laughs> you know, making spit bubbles is kind of fun. Mm -hmm. Carl, have you been messing with the cloning machine again? No, no not me. me. No, -uh. you got the wrong guys. And then we got cookie time, which is Jimmy trying to get cookies and using his little remote to change his circumstances. Don't mind if I do. Okay, you can have one cookie. Don't mind if I do. So he could get as many cookies as possible and accidentally gets warped into the old times. And then we got new dog old tricks where Cindy and Jimmy face off against their dogs, technology versus 
human. A custom-built cybernetic canine with an optical fiber neural, neural blah, blah, blah. Humphreys, a purebred lass of smart so, the most intelligent breed in the world. And in the end, Goddard explodes. It's, this is a really funny one. I'm glad that we're introduced to the female character for, I don't know what her outfit is though. And then we get Jimmy doing some Mary Poppins thing with his little cube that I remember. Stuff in this little tiny space. Cool, huh? And this entire thing takes place at the dinner table when Jimmy actually tries to not eat his food and stuff it into the cube. In the end, it explodes and they're all covered in it. Then C minus, um, we, we see Jimmy do like a C project for school. I can't do a thing about this leak from in here. I'll have to go topside. I wouldn't do that. How come? And it turns out that Jimmy accidentally put the entire house underwater. I love that they're testing out different scenarios that they could put them in. Like it's very clear that C minus is a prerequisite to when they when they do the submarine thing. And then it's actually starting to look a lot more polished by the seventh short, Ultra Lord versus the Squirrel. Jimmy Sheen and Carl talking about Ultra Lord, and I think this is Sheen's first appearance. I can hypnotize those squirrels into thinking Ultra Lord is a giant acorn. Then they will gather him for me, completely under my control. Um, this is where it really gets funny as the squirrels attack Jimmy. Then we got Pain Pain Go Away, which is just Jimmy and Carl at the dentist, and Jimmy basically reflects his pain to Cindy somehow. Wrong with you, Cindy. This must be no neutral. Which is cool because it's like. That is obviously something a kid would want to do. And then J and then Cindy ends up turning it back onto Jimmy by purposely getting hurt and hurting Jimmy. And then we get Calling All Aliens, which is kind of like a mini series of a bunch of one minute shorts that take place after one another, where each segment ends on a to be continued. And there's like this voiceover guy. <laughs> Will Jimmy ever hear his alien message? Will he ever put on his pants? So I just really wanted to cover this before the movie because this is essentially what I see as a first season. It's it's every it's the ca the crew and cast testing out a bunch of different things and making changes accordingly in a very quick time frame. It just clear that they were test every short was testing out a different thing. Like one short was testing out Jimmy's relationship to other people as they added Sheen, Cindy, and then finally adding Libby to the last one, finishing the roster. And then we get kind of like an idea of who he is as he tries to like manipulate his parents. Jimmy's biggest struggle is his, he, he has the brain of a genius, but he has the maturity of a child. So that tends to really overshadow all his projects. And it's clear that his parents aren't really good role models as Hugh is kind of a dope and doesn't really know how to explain it to him. It's, it's fun because this first season is not long, so it doesn't really have Jimmy learning his lessons. It's a bunch of little comedic situations that he gets into and sometimes not even get out by the end of. And I really had fun like watching these, especially never having seen them before because I guess I didn't grow up with them on my TV. Uh, but it's really cool to see. It wasn't just the movie and it was successful. It, it was clear that they took a long time to really develop, you know, what they wanted the show to be before most of it even came out. And that's a little different than kind of what on, went on with Fairly Odd Parents, who also had a, a bunch of different shorts. Like they, they were good enough on their own. They didn't feel like tests, but Jimmy feels a lot more like tests. And it seems like it really paid off at the end. I'm not sure how much the development team had to go through before getting green light versus after getting green light and even this pilot before the movie, but I really hope it wasn't a bad environment. Without further ado, let's get to the real first season. When pants attack, Jimmy, after being scolded for not picking up his pants, invents a chip to automate the task. Pants don't pick themselves up. Pants don't pick themselves up. Pants don't pick themselves up. So after a really uncomfortable introspective, Jimmy comes up with an idea. Through the miracle of neutron nanotechnology, I present Smart Pants! Steve Jobs, you better step back! But the invention malfunctions, causing the pants to become autonomous and leading them to rebel against the town. I must stop pants! <laughs> My pants are 
pants or infecting the other pants. So in a really, really disturbing display, we see pants take over Retroville. This in hindsight shouldn't be that scary, but it's kind of terrifying. What, what is it? Oh my, it looks like a homage to Alfred Hitchcock's movie, The Birds. Do you think this could possibly have anything to do with Jimmy's self-folding pants? Jimmy uses his genius to regain control, stopping the pants uprising and restoring Retroville. You made this mess, and you are not going anywhere until you pick up these pants. Mom! And the episode ends just how it started. This is a big improvement off of the first pilot. The first pilot more feels like a shortened, condensed version of the movie fit into eight minutes. But this feels like, you know, we're in Jimmy's town, we're seeing his daily life at school, and it still has supernatural aspects that show his genius is his biggest flaw. How about a little kissy or a little fishy? <laughs> well, I was a fishy, but now I'm more of a raw slice of fish flesh. Better hurry. Slowly, the bacteria will set in. I'll be unfit to touch, let alone kiss. Come on. Yeah.